but today I am going to the San Diego International Fringe Festival, which is a whole collection of independently created shows, uh, theater. So I decided to take you along with me. With being a part of the Fringe Festival, I get this little pass that allows me to go to all the shows for free. So we are going to Rosewood Studios. I must find the theater. Hello. Oh, a rock opera. F.E. Green doorbell. What the hell? Is that a panda? Where are we? I'm be on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hi guys, so I just got back to my apartment after some shows and I wanted to show you the program. So Fringe Festival takes place June 23rd to July 3rd. And this is like their little crazy guy. It's called 11 Days of Eye Busting Sh Eyeball Busting Shows, which I guess is why this little eyeball guy is here. He's like, meh. Okay, so the program has like little summaries of all the shows. Um, there is a map here of all of the venues. So most of them are down here in the gas lamp area. Up here, I think that's diversionary. I have no idea what's over there. Um, and then you have the schedule. So it's broken down by day. So today is Saturday, June 25th. And these are all the different venues and what's playing at what time. So I started with an excruciatingly ordinary toy theater show, a new puppet spectacle by Zach Dorn. So I just found it to be really innovative. Um, and here's a little clip from the show. Like newlyweds, like a romantic comedy, like it was just us versus the world. And we were eating hot dogs. The kind of hot dogs my mother used to pack for school lunch. Boiled the night before, served cold with a side of sliced white bread. But with Brittany, these hot dogs made me too. So the next show that we went to was the video games. Highly anticipated because I love video games. It's like a Hunger Games spin. So this is their program. What you did in this show was for the, they introduced all of the contestants into the Hunger Games and you voted for them using a hashtag on Twitter. Um, Samus, she was so good. She was so funny. We actually wanted her to win and I don't know why she didn't win because we were definitely cheering for her the loudest. <laughs> My wife and family were murdered by the Lin Kuei. Oh. After the 57th video games, I will have my revenge. Let's hope you're not reunited with your wife. <laughs> I will destroy you. Okay! okay. <laughs> Hashtag BG01. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ooh, fresh from the cryogenic stasis, John 117, the Master Chief! <laughs> Me. 
Okay, so the next one we went to was Belief No Repeat. Um, my friends did a great job and I was glad that I went. So now I am at home, I am going to take a nap. But later on, there's the Mysterium uh, Magic Show. Hi, back! And now it's time for some magic! Hi. So we're here for the magic for Mysterium. Mysterium. Central. So these are like everybody's flyers. Um, <laughs> I realize I haven't told you guys about my show. This is Phantom of the Empire. It is a hilarious mashup of the original Star Wars trilogy and the Phantom of the Opera. And that's us right there. That's me right in the front. So there's a little Ewok. I believe everyone was saying that, yeah, she made like pins for our musical. So, Phantom. This is our logo right here. It's hard to see. Oh my god, look. That's Andrew and Robert. <laughs> That's so cool. Ooh. Oh, and she also made these bows that are awesome. That one's got a lightsaber on it. Yoda. Club, fringe, and restrooms. Okay, so. Downtown is so dense. There's so much stuff that you didn't even realize was here. Hi, uh, Mr. Horsey. Oh, this is where you can take like a little photo. How cool. Don't dream it. Be it. Believe you can. You're over there. Oh, this is nice. Oh, look. Yoda. There's just flyers everywhere. Hello. So this is the show that I saw earlier. It's called Belief No Repeat. I didn't that is Natalia. She's amazing. And that's Aaron. And then I believe my friend Jessica, who directed Disenchanted, I believe she's involved with SD Play Company, but I have not um, seen her yet. So anyway, it's almost 10.30, so it is time to go on, on to the next one. Whoa. This show is happening right now. Maybe I'll go see this one. Eat like a dictator. an old school selfie. Yeah, get in there. I know, right? Yeah. It's a video. Oh, hi. I already, I already ate my watermelon, Kale. and I am feeling responsive. We're here to see Qaddafi's cook. Qaddafi's cook. I'm feeling quite responsive. I didn't know there was food in this show. You know, if you don't need watermelon, very happy. How about the basics? A living wage? <laughs> Better housing? <laughs> Decent medical care? None of this does anybody get a right. Doctor figures that nobody has a right to anything. Doctor decides who, why, how much. He had a large family. His big family only was to be trusted, so the cheese on top is the final advantage. I'm just having a great time at Fringe. I sound so nerdy but like if you're in the fringe then you get to see all the shows and there's a hundred shows and which ones are we gonna see and this is only day two or day three but for me i've only been two days and there's nine more days left what is left for me and all these shows tomorrow we have a show and everyone uh, keeps saying that they're gonna come and i'll be able to show you some backstage stuff uh, so I'm really excited. I have no idea what shows I am going to see. Oh, but I did want to call out the actors of Qaddafi's Cook because they were really good. Alvaro Flores was 
amazing. He would just look you in the eye and like intense stares and it just made you uncomfortable, which is what acting should do. And then Paola Madrigal, Madrigal, I don't know how to say her name. She was amazing. Uh, she won Best Actress a couple of years um, in a row, so she was also great. She was uh, the cook's sister and she was reading his diary and then Alvaro was playing the sous chef to this cook. And I think that's about it. I think I've beaten this thing to the ground. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.